There is always a lot of complexity in transfer markets, because anything can happen. As costs rise, clubs will end up struggling, and that's especially the case when you are a club in the championship like Leeds United. And it means that some sides benefit a lot more from free moves than others do. Free moves being when someone's contract has expired and you want to sign them without a transfer fee because they've not got a club and you only need to pay for their wages. And that is especially true when there are some diamonds in the rough. Leeds United are one of the clubs in that position right now and have made their first approach towards a free agent that I think could genuinely make a difference next season. So let's talk about the Whites making their approach for a free signing. But first, subscribe. Thank you. Um, the news update is that Leeds have reportedly properly approached Callum O'Hare on a free transfer now. There was a little bit of a rumour of interest floating about a little bit, and fair, yeah. Uh, but this is the first report that I've seen personally of an actual formal approach to him, which I think is a very big step forwards. But there are some potential issues with completing the signing, and I will get into those a little bit later. But first, we've got to talk who Callum O'Hare is, what he does, why he fits Leeds United perfectly, in my opinion. Uh, previously, he played at Coventry City. Plenty of experience of the championship, spent a good chunk of last season a little bit injured, but when he is on the pitch, he primarily plays as a number 10. Very creative kind of guy. Uh, he had 15 starts there last season, something like 18 appearances off the bench. As I said, he was injured quite a lot, so he didn't really force his way into the first 11. Seems to have overcome those issues now and is growing his way back into things. But he took a big chunk of last season basically as recovery, including a lot of those sub-appearances. Scored six goals, got two assists, which is fairly strong because that's just his starts from the number 10 position. And clearly he has a very, very good amount of creativity. And it's the specific type of creativity that, in my opinion, we are lacking at the moment. Compared to last season, when most of our creative players were, if you looked at Jorginho Ruter and Somerville and Nonto, they were creative players in the way that they dribbled, in the way that they could beat one or two players and create a little bit of space and then find a pass. From what I've seen, Callum O'Hare is more of a progressive passer than a dribbler. He's in the top 10% for progressive passes made, passes attempted, and progressive passes received. So he's going to be a big part of that whole ball progression model that we're trying to build and the rumoured three number 10 system that Daniel Farker might potentially look at going into this season. He's sort of exactly what we need. And that's fantastic and is one of the many benefits to Leeds United that I'm going to dive into now. We still have some risks about the move, but we'll ignore those for the minute and just look at the benefits because he fills a position that we quite badly need. We've kept Brendan Aronson. Brilliant. Technically, we're a number 10 up from where we were. But at the same time, we don't know for certain that Brendan Aronson can do it at this level. I'm assuming he probably can because he's played at the Champions League level. He's scored goals in the Champions League. He's played in the Bundesliga, Premier League. Mossy's not shone there. The championship is a different monster. The championship is very much a lower standard and something that you can get your teeth into if you're a really good player and sort of demonstrate why people think you're that good. Key example, Crescencio Somerville. Played all right in the Premier League. Has played not much else anywhere, but he's got quality and he immediately showed it in the championship. That's something I think could happen with Aronson, but he might go on to the wing because he's sort of a wide player at points. He's also not that passing player. And having Callum O'Hare on board gives us the dribbling option and the passing option and sort of opens up a lot of opportunities for us. In addition to that, his wages at Coventry were just £10,000 per week. At least that's what they were reported to be. And that means that for Leeds United, that's fairly reasonable. That's pretty easy to sort out. Off the top of my head, Diego Urente was on something like £70,000 a week. So even if we're doubling his pay to 20 k a week, that's great for him and fantastic for us because it's a big old cut on what you can expect to pay for a lot of championship quality players, which he is. He's a very good footballer. And you add on to the fact that there is no need for a fee because he currently doesn't have a club. It financially starts to add up to make a hell of a lot of sense for Leeds United to chase this move. He's very clearly a quality player. He's very clearly got a high ceiling. And if we can get him on board, keep him fit and keep him in the team, I think he's absolutely going to make a difference. But there are some big old challenges for Leeds United to get this move across the line. Because we're not the only club looking at the move. As I mentioned a little bit earlier, I'm going to find the specific banner. Some sides benefit from free moves, especially when there are these diamonds in the rough. 
the thing with a diamond is it shines and more than one club is going to see it. So we aren't the only club looking at signing Callum O'Hare. The first of these threats is from Burnley, who, thinking about it, might have stronger finances than us right now. Spent last season in the Premier League, which means that they got significantly more cash than we did last year. And next season, we are going into it with the second year of parachute payments, which I think is 45% of TV revenue, whereas Burnley are coming into it with 55%. On a financial battlefield alone, I feel like Burnley win that fight. Higher parachute payments, more money last season. Maybe on the sort of potential to get promoted sooner front, we beat them to it. Maybe on the reputation front, we beat them to it. But if they can beat us financially, it becomes an uphill battle. On the reputation front, we can also struggle a little bit because the biggest threat, in my opinion, is Southampton, who are also reporting a bit of an interest. Got promoted over us in the playoff final, which was a bit depressing. Um, and it puts them in a stronger position, I think, in the chase for Callum O'Hare. They offer higher prestige football because it's the Premier League rather than the Championship. It's an easier schedule for a player because you've got eight fewer matches. And they've got more of a wage budget because Premier League money. I feel like if Southampton are fully committed to this, it's going to be tough for us, although there is a question surrounding game time. How much will he reasonably be playing at Southampton? Because at the end of the day, he is a upper championship level player, whereas they need to be looking a little bit higher than that if they want to survive. For Burnley, that game time thing is less of an issue, but I think at Leeds he'd get plenty of matches. That's something we would definitely be able to provide him. I think we could match his wage requirements. It's just the Southampton question, in my opinion. So ultimately, I think we have a very, very good chance of signing Callum O'Hare in this window and taking a nice creative number 10 from Coventry City to Elland Road and hopefully using him to build a very, very effective season on the back of. We can use Daniel Farker's experience at Norwich to sell the project when he played with that three number 10s up top system. Of course, some of them floated out wide from time to time, but just imagine him in the middle, Brendan Aronson and Jorginho Ruter to the sides. Oh, the creativity, the vibes that would flow out of that side would be absolutely immaculate. But we need to remember that whilst he is good, we cannot afford to fall into a financial dogfight. If it turns into a bidding war of just push the wages higher and higher and higher and higher and higher, we should probably get out of there. Because that's not a situation you want to be in if you're Leeds United and we might need to potentially look after the money, especially if we've got a lot more signings to make in the summer. £5,000 on someone's wages saved might not sound like a huge amount when you can get something over the line, but it adds up if you've got, what, four different players, all of whom you've saved five grand a week on, that's another player. So that's something we need to be very careful of as well. But what we don't need to be careful of is your opinion. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do you think we should sign Callum O'Hare? Do you think Breeze are the way to go? Or should we just look at players with fees just because we know that at least they have some like intrinsic value to them? Yeah. Let me know. Subscribe uh, if you are new here and you like the video and you want to stick around a little bit. Like the video if you enjoyed. and. Uh, even become a channel member. All that money is still going to Prostate Cancer UK. I'm going to leave that there, and I will see you later. I should have recorded this video before watching Doctor Who, because now it's 1.16 in the morning, and I'm a little bit spooked on the inside. Good episode, though. You should watch it. All of you, right now, go and watch some Doctor Who. See you later.